request of plus a million five hundred. What at this point do you say you would have to get rid of in order to meet his budget? I believe eighty percent. Eighty percent of those costs would have to come from salary and benefits. Uh, it would be teacher, administrators, tutors. It would be everything but anybody that services special ed kids. One point, so I believe 1.75 times 0.8 is ballpark about 1.2 million. Um, obviously, any other savings the board might find with reduction of other programming would come off of that. So it could be reduced. But, but if we are trying to make up 1.75, most of that's going to have to be done in salaries. 80% of our budget is salary and benefit. Well, do you have a, a, what type of an estimate of how many teachers? 1.75? 1. 1. 1. 1.2 million. Um, our average tutor cost is 25000 Our average teacher cost is 76 in salary. But if um, you get rid of teachers, but we also your have to. Youngest. We don't. Um, Hopefully it wouldn't be like it was six years ago, where we also had to pay unemployment. Hopefully mm -hmm. there are jobs out there. But any elementary people we would lay off, uh, I, I wouldn't have high hopes that there would be jobs out there for them. I have a question. How would the ten, 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 I'm sorry, 10 teachers at 76,000 would be 760,000. So. It's, we'd still have a ways to go. What might a comparison, if you don't get this rollover budget of 1.753 million, what would the comparison be with a disastrous year of 2009? How about, might those two years compare? It, it wouldn't be. Um, it wouldn't be to the extent that it was that year. Uh, but I would tell you, based on where we're at now and the way we're performing. I think it would be pretty significant because with the layoffs um, going back six years ago, uh, we reduced some special ed staff at that time. That would not happen at this point with our numbers. Because you, you can't, to service kids um, by their individual education program, that's a legal document. So you, you have to have the staff to give them the services. You can't just say we're not going to do that. So. Um, on the special ed side, there would be no impact. On the regular education side, class sizes at the schools you saw mm -hmm. that have reductions, uh, Perry Hill, uh, not the high school, because the high school is increasing in the number of kids, uh, it'd be significant. I, I, I'm not, you know, it's too early to speculate a number. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going back to meet with Mary Loretta in a couple of weeks. Hopefully we're going to get to a better common ground than we are now, but I think everyone has to understand the reality of where we're at now. And again, if, if we entered a deal with the city like a year ago, where the city would take some things. Um, for example, the city owns the buses and they own the propane contract. In my mind, the city should assume those costs because they have the contract. They own the buses, they own propane. Also now we have dual fuel. Okay, we have dual fuel at all of our elementary schools. It's dual with both propane, liquid propane, and uh, gas, although uh, Sunnyside might still be oil and gas. But um, I believe that's a half a million dollars. If the city would assume that, that obviously would reduce, would reduce the gap for just rollover to about 1.2. 1.3 million. So we're open to work with the city to get to a better place. Um, again, I understand that the new improvements are, are onerous, particularly with our high road over. But I will tell you this, um, we're going to have to address accreditation issues, like in the library. If we don't do it in this budget, we're going to have to do it in next year's budget. Okay, sooner or later, we're going to have to add a guidance counselor at the elementary school. So while there are some things that can be saved for maybe a better budget year, um, the rollover costs are our reality, unfortunately. But I, I think it's, it's too early. I mean, I wouldn't want to put a number. We haven't even, we don't know what the final number is going to be. And the board once I knew what a final number would be, 
I first have to inform my administration of what we would have to expect. So I, I don't I don't want to project. I mean, I think there's time before the uh, public hearing. And again, I believe uh, Dominic and I are meeting with the mayor the week after next. So, uh, and Mark has always been open to meet. And hopefully, we can find more common ground. The other thing is the board would not go through the exercise of determining where the cuts would be made at this stage of the game because it is still a moving target. There are still efforts being made to, you know, get to a place that can work better for everyone. I think um, what I said to Charlotte, I think, is, is real. 80% of our budget is salary and benefits. So to think that closing the gap, whether it's 1.2 million, 1.7 million is going to come from 20% of the budget. That's not real. Okay. The, our biggest line items are salary and benefits. We have to reduce salary and benefits. And I would say whatever the gap would be, 80% of that has to come from salary and benefits. It's just, it's simple math. Okay. The people with the statistics. Excuse me. Uh, you have another question? Yes. John? All right. Yes. In view of the statistics that you present, which seem to me to be reasonable, why does the worthy MT and the alderman each year go through this same exercise um, and possibly face the same dire consequences? Do you have an answer for why this recurs again and again and again in view of the reasonable statistics that you provide? I don't think Why is this something we can a project? Solve. The only, the only yes. thing I would say to that is I think um, there has always been, over at least the last three years, opportunities to sit down with President Angles, John Papa, and the mayor to try to get to a better place. No matter where we started. Thank you. Yes, Jack, you have a question. Two left, two. Um, one was going to go back.